Joe Biden is currently working on selecting his running mate for the 2020 election. The presumptive Democratic nominee has teased possibilities like Stacey Abrams, Maggie Hassan, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, and even Michelle Obama to potentially serve as vice president should he win the presidency. The media too has speculated about a number of other possibilities whom he has yet to comment on. Some, like a Tammy Duckworth or a Val Demings, are very real options. But some other suggestions are, quite frankly, ridiculous. So in this video, I'm going to brave a slightly different take on the speculation surrounding Joe Biden's VP pick, and dare to ask, who won't he pick? I know he'll surround himself with good people experts, scientists, military officials, who actually know how to run the government. Before we begin, a big thank you to the patrons. Shout out to my newest, Harry O'Brien and Dan M. Also a shout out to all of these fine folks who have for some time helped to keep the lights on here. You too can support Question Time Politics at patreon.com slash question time. Now let's get into it. First on my list is Hillary Clinton. And then there are hugs that keep going and going and going. Joe Biden wouldn't let Hillary go as they met on the tarmac at Scranton Airport. I am thrilled uh, to be part of your campaign to not only endorse you, but to help highlight a lot of the issues that are at stake uh, in this presidential election. There has been a push in the mainstream press for Hillary Clinton to be Joe Biden's running mate sometimes paired with the suggestion that he then drop out of the race so that she can lead the ticket. Whatever the case, Hillary Clinton is not likely to be among Biden's top choices, nor should she be. I largely agree with a Fox News analyst, Chris Steyerwalt, who said of Clinton, you could not fathom a worse running mate outside of Hunter Biden. Sure, Hillary is experienced, well-known, and has the connections to raise money, but even Clinton allies know that she is not a good choice. John Saxon, who chaired the Alabama presidential campaigns of Bill Clinton in 1992 and 1996 wrote, I've known her for more than 35 years and have immense respect for her. She is too divisive. Sure enough, while Biden may not be the most universally loved Democrat in America, Hillary Clinton was a historically unpopular Democratic nominee for president. And there's no reason to suspect that she would be more popular as a vice presidential nominee. Even after the dust settled on her presidential campaign in the fall of 2018, Gallup reported that her favorability had hit a new low, 36%. And of course, while Biden has been dogged by Tara Reid's allegations, it's probably not a good idea to bring the Clintons along on the campaign trail. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. Next, let's dismiss Tulsi Gabbard. So today, I'm suspending my presidential campaign and offering my full support to Vice President Joe Biden in his quest to bring our country together. While Tulsi does command a loyal following, she brings more trouble to the ticket than she's worth. If you want a vice president who can simultaneously alienate moderates and progressives, Tulsi's a strong contender. She damaged her reputation in the progressive movement by backing away from Medicare for All during the presidential primaries and by not backing the Green New Deal. She upset most Democrats when she failed to vote for the impeachment of Donald Trump, and the Clintonite wing of the party is very much turned against her, especially since Hillary decided to call Tulsi a Russian asset. Despite her beef with the former first lady, Tulsi shares something in common with her. People hate her. Amongst Democrats, Tulsi's net favorability, according to YouGov, is negative 13 percentage points. Another highly unlikely choice for Uncle Joe is Michelle Obama. Joe Biden once said he'd pick Michelle Obama as a running mate in a heartbeat. Al Sharpton claims that he has added a political incantation to his daily prayers. God, please let Michelle Obama be Joe Biden's running mate. I see the appeal of Michelle Obama. I personally like Michelle Obama. I think she was a positive influence on Barack during his tenure as president. The former first lady is certainly quite popular and adding her to the ticket 
would be a way to sneak Barack, who happens to be the most popular Democrat in the country, back into the White House. At the same time, she has no actual political experience. As much as her tenure as First Lady gave her the opportunity to gain widespread visibility and learn how to manage the press, it did not prepare her to actually help run the country. Not only is she ill-prepared for the role, her selection would also be widely seen as nepotistic, and I imagine that would damage whatever favorability she currently enjoys. Michelle has also been quite clear that she has absolutely no interest. As she wrote in her 2018 memoir, Becoming, I'll say it here directly, I have no intention of running for office ever. Would you Just, ever run for office? No, I have to ask it. No, no. No kind of office. No. I, I Look, that's one thing I don't do. I don't make stuff up. I'm not coy. I haven't proven that. I, yeah. I'm pretty direct. Yeah. If I were interested in it, I'd say it. I don't I believe in playing games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, it's not something I would do. Um, but it also speaks to the fact that people don't really understand how hard this is. Look, we all like Michelle Obama, but she doesn't want to do it. And if she did, we probably wouldn't like her nearly as much. Picking Michelle Obama is like picking Oprah, or Beyonce, or Ellen DeGeneres. It sounds like a fun idea, until you actually think about it seriously. Next up, let's talk about the Meghan McCains or Nikki Haley's, any female Republicans who might be palatable for Democrats. These kinds of choices are just not going to happen. You jokingly say, forgive me, Father, I'm friends with Republicans, which always makes me laugh. I love you so much. I've called you more times than I'm sure people could probably imagine. Well, Biden has said that he would be open to selecting a Republican, and for whatever reason, there's been a long-standing dream amongst certain political commentators to have a unity ticket. That's just not how politics works anymore. Al Gore got us as close as you're gonna get in relatively contemporary politics when he chose Joe Lieberman. If Biden wins the election, his running mate would become the VP, and thus be groomed for leadership down the line. It's an incredible opportunity for a politician to gain experience and name recognition, setting them up to plausibly run for president later on. The Democratic Party and its donors, quite frankly, will not accept the idea of Biden giving this opportunity to the opposition. Speaking of choices that are unacceptable for the Democratic establishment, let's talk about the very progressive options like Rashida Tlaib and Nina Turner. Just as party insiders and donors are unlikely to support Biden in choosing a Republican for his running mate, they would be probably even more resistant to the idea of him picking anyone from the left. Democratic socialists and substantial Bernie Sanders supporters are highly unlikely to be selected. Sure, these would be the optimal choices to unify the party, but Biden and his advisors want to promote the future of someone who supports the Democratic establishment, probably someone from the New Democratic Caucus or someone with a moderate liberal ideology. The furthest left he'd plausibly stretch would be Elizabeth Warren. Here's another substantial group of potential contenders who Biden will not pick from, men. The media has hyped up the possibility of running with Andrew Cuomo, and certainly Biden owes a lot of his current political fortune to characters like Pete Buttigieg and Beto O'Rourke for their support during the Democratic primaries. And on top of that, he no doubt sees the Beto's and Mayo Pete's as the future of the Democratic Party. Still, there's virtually no chance that Biden is selecting a man. He was very clear that he would choose a woman, and the media has written ad nauseum about his potential running mates with the assumption that he will stick to that promise. Put simply, the idea is too ingrained now for him to back away from this commitment. Sure enough, Biden has made some strange choices throughout his life. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. He characterized the fact that Obama is articulate and clean as a storybook. Who is articulate and bright and and clean, and nice looking guy. He once claimed that you can't walk into a 7-Eleven without having a slight Indian accent. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a fully, I'm not joking. Back in the day, he decided to plagiarize a number of political speeches, including this from UK labor leader, Neil Kinnock. Why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? Why am I the first Kinnock in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? Was it because they were weak? Those people who could wait, work eight hours underground and then come up and play football? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football for four hours? Does anybody really think that they didn't get what we had because they didn't have the talent? or the strength, 
of endurance. No, it's not because they weren't as smart. It's not because they didn't work as hard. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. It was because there was no platform upon which they could stand. But even Biden, I think, has his limits. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Sure anything is possible, but he's not liable to make a VP choice that instantly destroys his credibility or support amongst the Democratic establishment. And he's certainly not going to choose amongst the most unpopular politicians in the country. I mean, were Biden to select Meghan McCain or Hillary Clinton as his running mate, you'd really have to ask, who won't he pick? No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman in anger other than in self-defense, and that rarely ever occurs. And so we have to just change the culture, period, and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. It will be a big... Pr no, I really mean it. Oh, uh-oh, I'm in trouble.